Myths are not stories that are untrue. Rather, they are tales that don't fit neatly into the historical record, which serve as a foundation to a culture. <laughs> Must! <sighs> Monkey King workout, am I right? After decades of intense training with his new immortal master, Sun Wukong was stronger, had awesome powers, and was finally immortal himself. He was truly living the handsome Monkey King dream. That is until he managed to get himself kicked out of immortality school for being a show-off. But heck, he'd already achieved immortality at that point. And after so many years, he wanted to go back home and see how his monkey pals were doing. Today's tale is sponsored by Audible. Start your own audiobook adventure today by visiting the link in the description below. When Sun Wukong, the handsome monkey king, arrived home after years away, he found that not all was well in the water curtain cave on the mountain of flowers and fruit. For in his absence, a cruel bull demon had been terrorizing his monkey bros, stealing their stuff and kidnapping innocent baby monkey bros to be servants in his lair. Sun Wukong didn't waste a second. This demon didn't scare him one bit. In fact, actually, he was a little thrilled. For now was his chance to show off his new magical skills. So Sun Wukong leapt into the sky and flew to the demon's lair. There, he found the 30-foot-tall bull demon with glistening black armor and a massive gleaming sword who towered over the handsome monkey king. But he was not intimidated. He challenged the beast to a duel and whoosh, 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 he beat the demon to a pulp and then cut him in two with his own sword for good measure. Returning triumphant to the water curtain cave, his rescued baby monkey bro subjects in tow, he decided that nobody would ever terrorize his people again. And so he set out to find a fearsome weapon worthy of his greatness. Because, you know, vast magical powers clearly weren't enough, I guess. The most logical of monkey choices! During his studies with his old master, he had learned of the dragons of the sea and their magical arsenal. So he dove deep into the ocean, and there he found the palace of the Dragon King. He presented himself politely, and the two kings sat down for tea. Then when the Dragon King asked to what he owed the pleasure of this delightful afternoon, Sun Wukong told him that he was seeking a mighty magical weapon. Oh, the Dragon King said with a smile. We got those. And then they all went down to the armory to fetch a weapon for Sun Wukong. First, the Dragon King's servants presented Sun Wukong with a mighty sword, shining and deadly. Uh, too slashy, <laughs> said the Monkey King. And so the Dragon King sent them back to find a more suitable gift. Next, they revealed a massive nine-pronged trident with points as sharp as diamonds. Mm, too bulky, <laughs> the Monkey King cried. Annoyed, the servants hauled the trident back down and came up with a halberd, the mightiest, most magical weapon they had, which struck as hard and fast as lightning. But Sun Wukong was like, Boring! <laughs> Glancing around after all of these disappointments, Sun Wukong noticed a really cool-looking iron pillar with two bands of gold around it. So he ripped it out of the wall, because what else is a monkey king going to do in someone else's house? And then shrunk it down to the size of a staff and began flailing it about. Yes, this would do nicely. It was at this point that the Dragon King was getting understandably fed up. So he offered Sun Wukong a flashy magic outfit if he would just promptly leave. So then... Outfitted now with a suit of golden mail and a pair of shoes that let him walk on clouds, the Monkey King said his goodbyes and returned home, much to the relief of the Dragon King and his people. But because Sun Wukong had become so powerful and acted so brazenly, word of his exploits began to travel far and wide, which in turn caused more and more demons to show up and challenge him, which in turn caused more and more demons to get defeated by him and conscripted into his ever-growing army. In fact, the handsome Monkey King grew so infamous that one day, the kings of the underworld came up with a plan in an attempt to stop him. We shall take his soul while he sleeps and drag it down to hell. And they did just that. When his spirit awoke in hell, Sun Wukong was not happy. Don't you know who I am? I've transcended mortality! <laughs> The kings of hell have no power over me! How dare you! And proceeded to bash his way directly to the kings of the underworld's palace. Yeah, they panicked. 
and not wanting to get murdered by an immortal, manic, staff-wielding monkey. They quickly insisted that there just must have been a mix-up. Surely we must have been sent to fetch some other Sun Wukong. They fetched their ledger to correct this misunderstanding. The handsome Monkey King then crossed out his name and the names of as many monkeys as he could find in the Book of the Dead. And now he was doubly immortal. With his soul permanently erased from the roster of the dead, Sun Wukong's spirit returned to his body and he awoke in his palace. At this point, the Jade Emperor of Heaven himself heard tell of the mischievous monkey who was running around defying the divine order. He immediately commanded an execution. But then his royal advisor suggested that rather than trying to fight the Monkey King, which, let's be real, nobody knew actually how to defeat because plot armor, that they offer him a job instead to keep him too busy to cause trouble down on Earth. So the Jade Emperor of Heaven gave Sun Wukong the task of tending the orchard of the Peaches of Immortality. Because clearly, he was already very immortal, so he'd never be tempted by some peaches that just granted him what he already had. Not to mention the 3,600 peach trees took roughly 3,000 years to ripen, so Sun Wukong would be busy for a while. Oh, but man, had they underestimated the Monkey King and his insatiable desire for yet more immortality. Cut to a few years later, roughly 3,000, and he had eaten every last peach in the grove, gaining the eternal buff of immortality 3,600 more times. Unfortunately, the handsome Monkey King's plan had one flaw. Because you see, those peaches were intended for the Imperial Peach Festival. And one day, some servants came around to the orchard to pick up the peaches. Sun Wukong was found out. But that wasn't a problem. He just locked up the servants who had discovered him in the garden and proceeded to go crash the immortal peach party in disguise. Once there, he helped himself to some refreshments and got very drunk on the immortal wine. Inebriated immortality achievement unlocked. After having his fun, he decided to head back. But he was so drunk on immortality that he got lost and found himself in the palace of Lao Tzu. You know, the founder of Taoism. No big deal, am I right? While stumbling around, he found his stash of magical immortality pills. And by this point, you know what happened. Nom 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 can't die even more nom nom nom. But the immortality pills sobered Sun Wukong up. And he realized what trouble he'd be in if Lao Tzu found he raided his stash. So he snuck out of heaven and went back down to the mountain of flowers and fruit, hoping that this whole thing would just blow over. It did not blow over. When word reached the Jade Emperor of Sun Wukong's hijinks, he was finally fed up. He sent the armies of heaven to capture and execute the handsome Monkey King. But no matter what they tried, weapons, fire, lightning, they simply couldn't harm him. He was just too immortal! At the end of the day, only one person could take down the mighty Sun Wukong. The Buddha himself. The Buddha descended and offered Sun Wukong a deal. If the Monkey King could leap out of the palm of his hand, then Buddha would declare him the new Emperor of Heaven. Very psyched at this prospect, the Monkey King pumped up his cloud walking shoes and leapt as high as he could, all the way to the Pillars of Heaven. Once there, he graffitied his name on a pillar and peed on it for good measure, ugh, and then jumped back down to the earth, triumphant. But the Buddha shook his head. Oh, silly monkey. You never left the palm of my hand. I am one with everything. Thus it is impossible for you to leave the palm of my hand. And sure enough, barely visible on one of the Buddha's fingers was the monkey's graffiti, along with a faint whiff of monkey pee. And with that, the Buddha was like, B -b -b buddha magic! And trapped the Monkey King under a mountain to take a few centuries to cool off and reflect on his bad behavior. But as future tales of Sun Wukong tell us, some forms of chaos are impossible to keep down for long. <laughs> Watch where you're swinging that thing, pal. Once again, thank you so much to our sponsor for this episode, the immortal pillars of audio storytelling, Audible. You know, I talk a lot on this channel every week, and sometimes it's hard for me to find time just to sit and read. However, with Audible, I get the chance to listen to any of their countless audiobooks, podcasts, or Audible originals while doing other stuff like commuting around NYC or taking walking breaks, which we all should be doing more anyway. And actually, Jeff was just telling me about one of his favorites I need to check out called Red Shirts. It's a Star Trek-esque tale told from the POV of the lower-level crew, narrated gleefully by the one and only Will Wheaton. Damn it, Wesley, 
Why you gotta be so good at everything? And because Audible offers free and easy audiobook exchanges, and members can roll over their credits for a year, I get to engage with all of their cool stuff at my own pace. So for a 30-day free trial, plus your first audiobook and two Audible originals for free, visit audible.com slash extra credits. Oh, and then afterward, let me know what you're listening to in the comments. Legendary thanks to patrons Ahmed Ziad Turk and Kyle Murgatroyd.